All right, we're gonna get right into the tips and guide of how to position yourself and how to hold a position. This is a video I do not see a lot on YouTube and it's why I'm making this video because I see this mistake being made a lot. As well, we're gonna be showing some real-time examples in game with some positions. I'm gonna show you three different examples and how to hold and how to anchor whenever it's not really feasible to do so. And just really answer those questions that I've been seeing in the comments as well. The spectating series, whenever I say, hold the roof of the building, hold your position, and hold your angle. Let's break that down. So when I say hold the roof of the building, I'm using this building because this is hands down the most powerful position that you can have in the game. Now, I'm gonna give somebody brownie points in the comment section. If they can comment on this time step and answer it before I do in just a second, kudos to you. The reason why is your hitbox size. You can see that your hitbox will be cut in half while the opponent, if they decide to wide swing this angle, is going to be showing their full Hitbox. So when I say hitbox, I literally mean that. So if you were hiding at this point, nobody can see your hitbox. If you peek a little bit, they can see half. If you peek this way, well, then they can see a little bit more, a little bit less because some of these railings actually block it. Now, if you're all the way up here, the beauty is that you have, you can control your head glitch. So another word for this is head glitching. Now, that's an old term for first person shooters. Doesn't mean you're actually glitching it because that's where your gun is pointed. So your head is just peeking out. So if you get the perfect angle here and you poke, they can barely see you, meaning that you have the advantage. So I always tell individuals, especially when I'm coaching, why make the game easier for your opponent? Now, the reason I say to hold height. Now, if you hold the door, one, you'll have the fences here. We're going to go ahead and blow this door out just as an example. Let's say the door is blown. Now, let's say the, the enemy is shooting from here you are pretty much going toe to toe. You're both showing your full size hitbox here, which doesn't really do anything for you because if they crack you, they're going to push in, right? But if you're on the roof, let's say they were to crack you, you would be able to come right back with your hitbox and look at the angle that you have. So they can move up to here, but at least you can, let's say, nade them out. You can use some utility. Maybe if you're Catalyst, you can throw your Q there. You can Bangalore ult them. You can do a lot to pressure them off. Yeah, you can do it inside there, but you have both your your, your loadout and the ability to get them to stop. That's what your, your goal is to get them to stop their momentum. If you're up here and you crack them, you do a bunch of damage, this may cause, and the reason I'm using this is because I've seen the zone pull this way and I've seen teams have to rotate through this area. Yeah, there's cover for them to push forward, but your idea is to have this position. Let's say you do get cracked and you do need to stop them at the doorway here. At least now you have the ability to use this crevice here and you had the option to slow their push. That's your goal is to slow their push, to slow their momentum. Every minute that they're crossing is a potential for them to get hit here, to get hit here. And honestly, the same for you. You have to keep that in mind. Let's say there's a team that rolls up here and rolls up here, but at least you can fall back and go inside. But that's your goal is to have intel and information. Most people, whenever they hide up in a building, your only information is you're looking here. You're not looking, let's say maybe a teammate is looking here, but it's much easier to gather, gather info and information by being on the roof of the building. This is just the easiest example that I can provide. I'm gonna go to another spot on the map. I'm gonna jump cut. And I'm gonna give you another example of what it means to hold the top of a building and probably one that may not be ideal to give you the information to make sure that you know how to rotate properly and also realize whenever position is not ideal to hold on the roof. Let's jump cut now. Now, if you watched yesterday's spectating video, you'll notice that the zone pulled towards here and this team was getting hard gated as well as this is where the individual was ratting. So if you watched that episode, I wanna break this down because this is a great example kind of like a post analysis, is that this team located over here had to push in because they were late for rotation. This is a trickier building to hold on the roof, and I'm gonna explain why, but you still wanna hold that roof. Now, the only real windows that you have are here, here, and you got a window here and here, but it is a power play to hold because it does. it is a little difficult for them to push in. Look how much they have to traverse. But the thing is, people are predictable when they come out through windows and if they come out through those specific doors. It is a power play to hold the roof of the building. Now, the reason why is you can control your your space and your head glitch here. You can put up, let's say, rampart walls. You can put up some barriers. You can put your gen. Now, let's describe the weakness of the spot. If there was a team here, they would be able to shoot you from here. If there was a team here, they'd be able to shoot you from here. If there was a team over here, well, this is a lot of space to shoot you. That's a downside. Now, we'll answer the question now. What do you do in this scenario? Well, you hope that a teammate is watching your back. A team should be your teammate. One teammate should be watching this angle here. One teammate should be watching this angle here, and you should have the front end. If you notice that everyone is looking the same direction, it should be a key indicator for you to look somewhere else. Even if that teammate may be a little unreliable, they'll back up from the position. If they back up, that's a clear sign of, the, of I'm not confident to hold this angle. 
Now let's say you lose this fight up here. You have to know your exits. Think of this like an airplane or a movie theater. Know where you're going to go for an exit. If you're going to get inside the building, you go here. You can go here. And then some of the POIs, not this one, you can climb the window. Now this one, I don't think you can. I've tried and it doesn't really work. Unless somebody in the comment section can figure out how to do it smoothly. I, I can't do it smoothly. Now, when you go into the building, you'll know your strengths and exits. Now, going through the front door isn't going to be ideal because if this team is looking at you, then you're going to get shot in the back, and you don't necessarily want that to happen. So, this is probably one of the harder POIs, but it, it has pulled here, and you saw it in yesterday's episode, where it is important to know your strengths and weaknesses of holding an area. It is very important that somebody holds a roof to showcase presence, because if a team doesn't know somebody's in here, somebody will roll up for free right here. Somebody will roll up for free right here. They'll say, oh, the zone may pull over here. Let's push onto the building right here. You need to show presence to show a bit of dominance. And if you aren't confident and aren't showcasing dominance, well, somebody's going to roll up. The only thing you stop them is by, let's say, having a Watson, Caustic, Catalyst, Rampart to wall up these areas to slow the fight. But even then, let's talk about that now. I'm going to jump cut and I'm going to go inside the building and talk about what happens, let's say, when we get shot. All right, quick jump cut here. This is a smiley. It can never be unseen. And this is a another smiley yep you see them all over the map you cannot see them now let us discuss a worst case scenario like i was mentioning earlier if you get taken down from the roof now the important thing is that you now have information and information is key so even if you get knocked down the roof yes you lost a bit of resources hopefully you're able to put a little pressure out onto the team here and hopefully your teammate was watching over here and you maybe you're getting shot from over here so the best thing to do jump down make sure you're not getting shot at Watch your angle over on the right, ask your teammate for cover fire, and try to get in as quick as possible into an area. Now the downside, if this, if everyone decides to converge at once, make sure you go in before the zone is closing as well. Now if you're going to hunker down and you're going to play your placement here, at least you know the angle that you're going to hunker down all together. Now the thing, the thing is, if your team is too spread out, let's say you're trying to occupy both this end, and then one person is trying to chill in the center here, and then one person is all the way over here all by themselves, that if they get scanned by a Bloodhound or a Seer or another opponent and they realize they're by themselves, they're going to shove that side of the building. This is the pros and cons of Broken Moon, but at least in World's Edge, this is less of a problem because it's much easier to, to control a building. So you pretty much want to hunker down and let the other teams fight. Let's say the team on this side decides to push up and they take the roof of the building. Remember we knew that the roof of the building was a weak spot because this team is shooting at them and they have another team pushing up. So if you become the sandwich, your goal is to hold an anchor as long as possible until you see, let's say, Nox and find a weak spot. Let's say you see those Nox, you find the weak spot, you peek out, you go look out, you go up and you flank them, you get your elimination, you drop back down, make sure you do not go down, that's the biggest thing. And now you have an opportunity to rotate. Let's say the zone is pulling over to this location. This is the hard part. And I, I will stress this enough, this is really hard. At this point, you would ask yourself the question, and a lot of people do this in Ranked. Well, we held a really good spot, but the zone pulled here. How do we get over there? Now, you have to all go together is the big thing. If you know you got the knock here, and you know there's a team over there, and they're distracted shooting, you need to take this side and go this way. There's no way in heck you're going to be able to take that angle because this team that we mentioned over there is going to push up. So you need to find an alternative route to get through and use pathing that way. Now, the downside of this is that you're going to be coming up doing the same exact thing that the other team was. Now, if this team was smart, they'd be holding the outside and the roof of the building and shooting you as you keep rotating. But if you do enough damage to get them to fall back, at least what you can do is anchor the building that might be in zone here, because I know this one was in the spectating series, and provide the opposite anchor until you know that you can work your way in, if that's the pressure that you want to put. Because remember when we were watching the spectating video, this team was free right here. The person who was ratting was down there. And they were, this team was, you know, free shots. They're putting pressure on the team right here, here, and I think over here. And then one of them got eliminated and we're pushing over there. But if you had this angle in this position, and this is not the strongest building, though. Because keep in mind, there's there's not that nasty, you know, quote-unquote head glitch that you, you can put pressure opposite on. But you can at least do some quick peeks here. You can go on the left side and do a quick peek here. And then, essentially, once you get them cracked is that you start to work your way in because they're not going to re-peak when they're cracked. Let's say this person is cracked and then batting at the door. You have until the battery is done to push up. And then hopefully what you can do if they spend all that time in panic is you can take their roof from them. 
that's pretty much how you want to claim the building. Now you have this nice little head glitch back here, you anchor this spot, and then you coexist with them. Unless you put enough pressure and you just breach the building and take an opposite angle here, and then get inside and eliminate them if that's what you want to do. That is an option. Remember everything I'm teaching you in this video in terms of anchoring and holding a position and taking positioning back is a... You got to think of it like chess. While there is an optimal move, there's also a move that can counter that move. So remember that. So the counter to this is let's say the teammate was healing down below, but there was another person on the roof and you decided to cross and they got you on the cross. Well, now you're pretty much in trouble. You need your teammate to keep putting the pressure on the roof of the building to stop them. That is their overall goal. Now let's discuss a position, uh, I'm going to ping it on the map of where we're going to go to and jump cut next. It's not ideal to hold. So I've seen a lot of third parties end up in these areas here because they're really popular from promenade and stuff. These buildings are a little easier to hold, but I've seen fights that break down over here and I want to break those down. What happens if you decide to hold and a building that just isn't good? So let's, let's jump cut to that and then we'll wrap up the video from there. While we're here, this sparked a quick segment I wanted to do for you guys. Now, I know I mentioned the reason I'm doing this is because this section always gets third partied very, very heavily. Now, it, this is a very powerful spot because of the head glitch, but it is very exposed. Remember, my tip is to make sure that somebody is always watching the angle in which you are not watching. What will happen here is that you will take a shot. Let's say you were to shoot somebody here and about 10 seconds will pass. These shots will be heard from any, anywhere. A team from Production Yard could roll up, the team from Core could be running down, Dry Gulch could run down, Cultivation could run from this area, Foundry could be rotating in from zone. You need to be very, very aware the timetable of this fight. If this fight takes too long and you're not and you're not watching your back, assume that somebody is always going to roll up, even if this is a power position. Just want to provide that tip. I want you to step away to be very self-aware about what happens with third parties and that they can always be self-assessed and assume the worst that is going to happen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight a few spots that are very third party heavy and that can cause a lot of problems. This is a very big powerful spot and the reason why is your back is clear. Nobody's going to be running up from the back because there's a giant wall here. So at least you know your back is clear and the, your team has less to worry about. They focus on the right, they focus on the front, and you can have one just kind of focusing on the left holding this position over here. Very dominant spot. But I have seen the zone pull and very awkward spots around this area that teams decide to hold. Now I'm gonna explain what mistakes to see individual teams do and hopefully this is a good stepping away point. Is that if you realize you're holding a position here and you wanna hold roof, that if you're holding this and let's say the zone is pulling towards this area and you're like on the outskirts and you just wanna be safe, realize the more powerful dominant spot that you would rather be in or realize that you actually want to occupy this space much sooner. Do not hesitate for the best optimal spot and go to it. Sometimes playing it safe and being safe can be, I guess, quote unquote, what you want to do for placement. But if you don't fight for what's yours, and this is what I give coaching tips on, I say fight for what's yours and know if the zone is pulling away, then you need to go fight for that spot. You can't just stay here because this is, well, I, I encourage individuals to take the roof of the building, realize you can get shot from here. This is a very dominant spot. Some team will be here. Maybe somebody will roll up here and it's very hard to have visual as they run up. And it's very hard because your body is very much exposed. You can take shots over here to try to take this spot, but realize that you may have a team located in various angles. This is not the ideal spot to hold, but it can be a temporary spot. Let's say you have one person holding the roof and then talk her down in the building if that's what you want to do. This can be good to avoid those sandwiches and third parties, so that is an option for you, but it can be very, very difficult to know that you need to rotate. So when people ask for tips, how do I rotate? Fight for the most ideal fighting spot and how to get to that spot. If you know this zone is already going to pull away, let's say it's on this side of the map, you need to try to book your way through and fight for what's yours or fight for the best spot. If no team is here, you might as well just cross for it and go fight for it. Even if a team is located on the left, you need to throw down your ultimate, down whatever utility that you got to claim the spot. This needs to be your spot because this is a much more dominant position and you can get in and out probably on the this side over here much safer and this side over here if you know Elisa's zone is rotating. It's much better than being in the centerpiece right here where teams are going to rotate in your back. So keep that in mind when you rotate and when you think about zones. So let's look at the map as we close out here. Let's say that the, the zone was pulling over towards core. This is a very dominant spot. The reason we discussed before is that your back at least can be towards a rock and you have some cover here even though you know a team could rotate here or they can rotate here but at least your back is covered. 
And I've seen this zone pull here. Now it doesn't end here, but it has pulled over towards core. But at least this is a very dominant spot to gate some teams because the team will have to come through the bridge here. They'll have to come to this, but it's more of an open field. And the core team that if they're here, they're not going to be occupying these spots. They'll probably occupy these buildings. Now, it could be argued if you were this team, you need to get to this spot or you need to get over towards the north side of the map to control the center part of the core. Don't just sit on the outskirts and just wait for zone because all you're going to do is get gated. So your goal here is to find the power position, fight for what's yours, don't get gated. Think two steps ahead. If you walk away from this video, I want you to start thinking two steps ahead and I promise you, you're gonna go up RP and you're gonna be playing better. In fact, you might actually really impress some other of your friends and because you're thinking the step of how a competitive player thinks you're looking at the map and even if you've never played this map before and you start to think what is good geometry that can hold for me like if i look at stasis array and this is pulling here this is a very powerful building this section i actually don't even know what that is right there but these buildings are going to be a lot more powerful than trying to fight for like this open spot here or holding the building is going to be a better spot rather than holding let's say this section over here because then you have to pull out to the open even if you don't know the map it always makes sense where the power plays and what makes sense to hold just by looking at the geometry and how things are scaled out. This is a beautiful spot to hold right here. And if you anchor it well and put fences or, you know, or even if you Valkult towards a spot, let's say you, you are going to be gated and you need to Valkult somewhere in the opposite spot. What are power plays? This building here is really strong. This building, this building, if nothing's available, then go for the bridge and then try to work your way in to claim the spot go for the power play. So sorry for ranting to recap. I just, I've been seeing this a lot and I want all of you guys to improve. I don't see people talking enough about this in YouTube videos. And I hope that this gets views because maybe it'll help somebody out there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys all in the next video.